you're about to miss this Everything that you're about to witness Get up, come out and try to get this This is all a part of my sickness But listen up, cause you're about to miss this Everything that you're about to witness Get up, come out and try to get this And this is all a part of my sickness Hello and welcome to Crack the Cred the show that takes the mystery out of recovering passwords or finding ways around them. I'm your host, Dana Epp. Today in the office, we've actually been talking about information access and how do we access all our data internally here and when we're out in the field. And one of the interesting things when we were talking about it was the fact that a lot of us have tablet computers of some sort. My, my, my favorite here is my iPad. Um, but there's lots of other ones that we have in the office. And when we're having a conversation about how do we secure and safeguard them, and more importantly, how do the people in the community know how to do it, uh, it comes down to, it really is a matter of understanding the software and the hardware and understanding how we go to lock them or, or protect them. Uh, we're a Microsoft shop, so we use uh, you know, Windows Server 2008 R2 and we're using uh, Exchange 2010 and so we take advantage of the security policies that can be pushed down through uh, ActiveSync and, and that gives us the ability to pin lock the device to make sure that you need a pin to get in and if you fail 10 times it automatically wipes it. Um, which is really cool, except that really a four-digit pin is not that secure. It's not that hard to compromise that. Not usually in a, a matter of 10 tries, um, but the reality is, is it's one of those risks. Now, interestingly enough, being a kind of a guy that likes software and understanding how it works with hardware, um, it's not that difficult actually to get into an iPad if you know how to. Um, I'm not talking about going and, uh, you know, JTAGging in and, and really going through the hardware to, to, to bypass it. Um, I'm just talking about some of the interesting things that people are using for convenience that maybe we can use to our advantage. So understanding iPad 2s as an example, one of the new cool pieces of technology they have is this aspect called Smart Cover. And it's uh, basically a magnetic cover that you snap onto the side and when you close it, it automatically turns the iPad off. Uh, and when obviously you pull it up, it automatically turns it on. And you'd think it's some uber magic that does that, but really it's just a magnet that's just underneath the glass on the right side. Um, what's interesting about that is that sometimes when we think from a security perspective, uh, if that's what it takes to turn on and off the device, it's still not unlocking it, right? But there's a bug in iPads, and that bug relates to the fact that the state condition of the on and off that's done through the magnet uh, is something we can exploit to our advantage. So I probably don't want to go and try to crack this because I'm going to wipe it, but if I can trick the state of the iPad to act in a different way, maybe there's a way to bypass it. And actually there is, and it's, 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 it's documented out there. There's lots of people that know about it. So, it's one of those things I thought, we might as well make sure that people know how it works so you can think about how to teach your users to safeguard the systems. And it's, it works quite simple, actually. Um, with the smart covers, when you close it down, that magnet closes that circuit, and it, that's what turns it off. And when it opens it, it, it's, it, it, it opens it, so it automatically um, knows to turn it on. And that's pretty cool. However, if we just go to our fridge and just grab a fridge magnet, right, and we put that up in the top right corner, it will automatically turn it off. And if we pull it off, it turns it back on. Now, it's at the pin lock stage, so we can't just get in that way. Um, so that's not really all that quite effective. However, remember, we're talking about how to bypass this through understanding the state conditions. It so happens that the state of power down is different than lock screen. So if we were to go and just hold the iPad power until it goes to the state where you're about to turn it off and just to slide to power it off, but don't power it off. Take your fridge magnet and just automatically touch it to it. That's going to put the system in a different state where it's supposed to be in a um, turned off condition, but it's not. Actually, if you look behind slightly on the screen, you'll see it goes back to whatever the underlying screen is. Um, if I just pull my magnet off, we're still at that power off state screen. And if I just hit cancel, we're back to the application that's currently running. So ultimately, we just bypass the system, don't need a password at all to unlock it. We're into the application. Now, it's got limited functionality. It really only gives you access to the last application that's been running. So from a usability standpoint, if you tell your users to make sure you go back to the home screen before you lock it, it reduces that risk. Now, they still be able to see what applications they have installed, but they won't be able to launch them because in this condition, um, the security won't allow you to start a new application, but whatever was last on screen still continues to run. So think about it. If you're like me, you're running to meetings all the time, your email or your uh, access to your customer data or whatever you were looking at just before you jumped off is probably what's on screen. So if you want to find out and get into an iPad, just take a fridge magnet, touch it on the top right side, see what happens.
Listen up, listen up, just show the rest of this business.